Hey everybody, I'm Rotten John, and welcome back to some more Conan Exiles. Today we're in the Exiled Lands, and we're going to head into the Midnight Grove Dungeon to learn our Jabal Sag religion, and hopefully pick up some Shade Bloom. Oh, and this big guy you see on the screen right now, that is Jabal Sag, and he's the one that will actually teach us the Jabal Sag religion. All right, before we start our little adventure here, let me go real quick through what I'm taking with me and what my attributes are set at. So you'll see that I'm taking some Reaper Poisons to put on my axe. I've already put it on my Thrall's Acheronian Sword. We're also going to take some Snake Arrows, Poison Arrows, a couple of Water Skins, two sets of Infused Healing Wraps, two False Stacks of the Aloe Potion, a Shield, and our Bow. As far as my attribute points go, I dumped whatever I had left over from the others into my strength, which got us just a little past the second perk. Agility, I just went to the first perk in there. I'd like to get more in there because that helps add to your armor bonus. Vitality, we went all the way to the third perk so that we get the fierce vitality and the passive generation for our health. Nothing in accuracy. I'm not much of a bow user. Grit, we went to the third perk there. That just helps increase our stamina pool more. Encumbrance, we went to the second perk there. And also, in the grit we went to the third perk so that we could get the natural resistance to damage and then last of all survival we went to the second perk there just so that we would only use half of the water consumption that we would normally use i'd like to be able to reset my attribute points so that i could change these up a little and well we're going to be able to do exactly that after we go visit the child of jabal and we're going to do that here in a couple minutes and i'll show you where to find them all right, here we are in the center right-hand side of D8, which is just down below the den area. This fine-looking fellow right here is the guy we want to talk to. He is a child of Jabal Sag. Now, you can talk to him, and he'll tell you a little story. You can also learn the Midnight Alchemy from him, and you can also buy the Potion of Midnight Alchemy that gets you into the Midnight Grove Dungeon. And also, once you learn the Midnight Alchemy, you can craft this on your alchemy bench back at your base, and then that'll allow you to go into the dungeon anytime you want. When you learn your Midnight Alchemy, it also teaches you Potion of Bestial Memory, which resets your attribute points, and it also teaches you Potion of Natural Learning, which resets your feet points. And one thing to keep in mind, when you buy the Potion of Midnight Alchemy, it does have a DK timer on it. It will only last for about 30 seconds in your inventory, so don't come and buy it until you're absolutely ready to use it and go into the dungeon. When you're ready to go into the dungeon, just click Use when you have the potion highlighted and it transports you right into the dungeon. Now there's only one way that you can go and it's down this path once you get to this beginning area. And right away you're going to be greeted with some hyenas. We're pretty much just going to kill everything with ease throughout this dungeon because we do have the advanced weapon fitting and the locust poison applied to our weapons. So fighting these things is going to be relatively easy now. I'm also working on a quick video to show you where to get the locust poison and the scorpion queen poison that you can apply to your weapons here you have a choice to go left or right left way is the way of the wolf and the right way is the way of the boar i usually just go the way of the boar they're a little easier to fight you will end up going through some of the wolf area but i think starting out running through the boar area is a little bit easier I'll be having quite a few more Conan Exile, Exiled Lands, and Isle of Sipta videos coming up here real soon. So make sure you're subscribed. It's free to you, and it's going to help you learn the things you need to make the game more enjoyable. Now coming down through this path, you're going to run into a few groups of the boars and also some fighters. And there will be some archers that are mixed in here too. That's where a shield comes in real handy. And another thing to point out here, you can loot all of the NPCs in this dungeon. You can see we're tearing right through these boars with no problem at all with the advanced weapon fittings and the poison applied to our weapons.
As long as you stick to the path, you can make it through this dungeon without getting lost relatively easy. But it's also easy to get lost or stuck in kind of a loop that just keeps looping you back through one area to another if you're not paying attention. And now we're kind of running through what would be most of the part of the wolf area. And this is also one of those areas where you want to take it kind of slow because the wolves are hidden behind bushes and rocks. And at times you'll tend to get three or four at a time of them coming out to attack you. Here's a little area here you can peek through to see what's around the corner. And of course, it's more wolves. By using our shield and our weapons with the extended weapon damage kits and the poison applied to them though, we're tearing right through them. Remember to bring extra locust poison with you because the poison only lasts so long on your weapon. You have to keep reapplying it every so often. This is one of those spots I was telling you about where the wolves hide off to the side. I always forget about this area. And when you see the green glowing circular insignia, you know that you're coming into a boss area here. So make sure you're healed up, your thralls healed up, and then just simply walk through to get in. But once you're inside the boss area, it's actually locked. You cannot get out until you defeat the boss. Also, if the boss kills you, you start to back at the beginning of the dungeon and have to work your way all the way back to this area to reclaim your stuff and pick up the fight where you left off. And hopefully at that point, none of the NPCs and wolves and boars have respawned in. Or you're going to have some trouble getting back here. Here you'll see I used my skinning knife to harvest the boss panther and I got no shade bloom whatsoever from him. You need to use a pickaxe in here now after, I don't remember which update it was, but you need to use your pickaxe to get the shade bloom now. And you'll see that the mouth on the cave entrance is opened up on either side. If you go to those, those take you back to the beginning portal where you came in and you can exit the dungeon there if you've got enough shade bloom and you're happy with it. Or you can choose to go onward now. Now we've got three choices to make here. Left, center, and middle. I normally go to the left here. It's the bear way. It's a little bit tougher. But I think it's a little shorter getting through the dungeon coming this way. And also, following the main path, which will be the widest looking path through this dungeon, is going to take you through each one of the different areas with the different animals to fight. So as long as you're staying along the main path and following it through the dungeon, you're going to be able to get your bear cubs and your saber tooth cubs and your hyena cubs.
And this is where it gets interesting fighting the bears. It's better to come here at a later level in the game. If you get two of these bears ganging up on you at the same time, plus an NPC, it can wreck your day really quick and you're gonna have to start all over. A little pro tip while you're in this dungeon, if you get dead, like no more heartbeat going, you'll have plenty of time to get back to your base, get a new set of armor, new weapons, make another midnight potion, and get back into the dungeon to reclaim all of your gear, weapons, and to get your thrall to refollow you again. However, if you're on a PvP server, just have to hope that nobody else is in the dungeon and claims your stuff before you get back to it. Here you can see we're starting to have a little more trouble getting rid of these bears and that's because I forgot to reapply the poison to my weapon. So we're only stacking bleed on them as we hit them with our axe. So at this point we're about midway through the dungeon and there are these pools of water here that you can drink from and refill your water skins if you need to. Now we're going to head up into the bear cave. There's going to be three sets of two bears that we're going to have to fight through here. Plus there's an NPC inside the cave that we'll have to get rid of. This bear cave in here is where you're going to find your bear cubs that you can pick up and take back with you also. And I think I'm going to eat this guy's steaks because, well, he doesn't need them anymore. Up here you'll see that this is where the bear cubs have roamed around too. Now these cubs could be anywhere inside the cave. They do roam around some. And I'm thinking my buddy Kiss This Flesh Terror won't mind carrying the bear cubs for me. Now we're coming up to the last two set of bears that we have to fight that are guarding the cave area. Then there will be one more set of bears outside of the cave area that we have to deal with. And then we're done with the bears. Off in the distance, beyond these water pools here, you can see the other green glowing insignia. That's where we'll go in and fight our next boss. And this is another good time to make sure you and your thrall are fully healed up. This next boss will be the gorilla boss. He's not too bad to fight unless he hits you with his heavy attack. His heavy attack is a series of fist pounding on you like he's trying to drive a nail into the ground if he gets you with that attack and your health is other than full it might be lights out for you at this point point. and I don't know if you caught it there but his very first attack on our thrall was one of his heavy multi pounding attacks but while he's busy knocking a snot out of our thrall we're just gonna stand here and keep slicing him up with our knives and Make sure we have a full stack of bleed on them. This time I'll show you how we harvest the boss with our pickaxe and actually get shade bloom from him now. So 
So we're going to continue on the main path here. And now we've got another choice to make. We can go to the left, which will be more gorillas, or we can go to the right, which will be the saber tooth way. I think we're going to go to saber tooth way just to see if we can pick up a couple more saber tooth cubs. However, if you're not interested in picking up saber tooth cubs, I would recommend going to the left because the gorillas are a little easier to fight than the saber tooths are. There's only one spot in here where you're going to have a saber tooth come out of a hidden area. The rest of them you're pretty much going to see as you're coming up to them. Like this one here, if you were to run through here, you wouldn't see him until he was on top of you. And this way is definitely harder than going the way of the gorilla you'll get sometimes three saber tooths ganging up on you at once. And if you know anything about the saber tooths, they can wreck your day really quick. And once again, I don't think Kiss This Flesh Terror is gonna mind carrying our saber tooth cubs for us here in a minute. Now this is that area where you're going to have three saber tooths ganging up on you. And if you're not well prepared, this is where they're going to wreck you. Now coming up here to this little junction is where we would have come out if we chose to go the gorilla way. And you can sneak past here as long as you hug the right side of the wall when you come through here. And you won't get the aggro of these gorillas coming out. But they're no big deal, so we're just going to fight them and get rid of them. Now you can make your way to one of these ledges here. This is the ledge that takes you to the area where you're going to fight the boss bull. Now this guy is really tough. He hits you a couple of times. He can knock you into the poison area. He can kill you pretty easy. He has a charge attack and like a bucking attack where he bucks around and hits you multiple times. I normally like to send my thrall down in there, get the aggro of this bull, and then I'll just stand up here and pepper him with snake arrows a few times. Then I'll jump in and help fight. Another reason why I like to send my thrall in first and start knocking some of the health of this bull down is, is that when you jump off this ledge and you land down into the circular area, you will take fall damage. So I like to have the bull to be about half health before I jump down, take damage, and then have to fight the bull. And there's a good example of his bucking attack where he hits you multiple times over and over. And if you get caught in that, it can do a lot of damage to you. I kiss this, the flesh there. He pretty much took care of this bowl on his own. Pretty easy peasy. 
We'll harvest this bowl up with our pickaxe so we can get some more shade bloom. We'll get a bunch of other stuff from them. But right now it's just the shade bloom I'm interested in. Once you defeat the boss bull, all of the green noxious gas disappears. And then that opens up this pathway here that you can get out of. So we're going to take this up in. And we're going to have a few more things to fight before we get to the final boss. That's pretty much going to be just a couple more sets of wolves to fight. Then we'll have a couple of werewolf guys to fight. Then we can go in and fight the final boss. Now we've taken care of all the wolves, we have to fight these two were-hyena guys. They're not too bad, just have to watch out when they hit you, they do start to stack bleed on you. And up in the distance there you'll see the green glowing insignia, that's where we'll enter to do the last final boss fight. So you'll want to make sure that you and your thrall are fully healed and ready to go into this fight. Now this boss has been nerfed in the past. He used to be really tough. A few hits and you were dead. You came all this way just to die. He has, like I said though, he's been nerfed. He's not too bad to fight now. But he jumps around like a crazy person, which kind of makes it hard to fight him. And really now the best way to fight him is with your main weapon and then switch over to a set of daggers so you can stack bleed on him. The daggers also will stun him, which you'll see here. He gets stunned and can't perform his attacks when you're hitting him with your daggers. And it bleeds him out really quick. And here's our big guy, Jabal Sag. He's going to tell you a little story about welcoming you to the Jabal Sag religion and then what you actually have to do to learn the religion, which is eat the flesh of the boss you just defeated. At this point, the gates open up so you can go back into the dungeon or take the exit out of here. Now we're going to harvest him with our pickaxe and that's going to drop shade bloom and also this flesh of remembrance. So you highlight a piece of the flesh of remembrance, click use on it or eat it and that teaches you the religion of Jabal Sag. If you look into your feats now you'll see that the religion of Jabal Sag is now unlocked and we can start crafting the altars. Also on your inventory you'll notice that you have quite a few pieces of Flesh of Remembrance, but they do have a DK timer on them. So if you get back to your base you can put them in a preservation box and then share them with your friends or anybody else on the server, maybe trade them off for something, who knows. And that's it, that's the end of this dungeon, so now we're going to get out of here and I'll show you where we come out on the, uh, the Exod Lands world. All right, here we are in the Exiled Lands, and it puts us just outside of Sepamaru City, where the cook always spawns on the little island. Now that we're back at our base, we're going to throw our newly found cubs on, into our animal pen, get them going, and take a look on our alchemy bench at our midnight potion, our potion of bestial memory, and our potion of learning, so that we can reset our attribute and feat points anytime we want, or make another potion of midnight to go back into the dungeon. Alright, I hope you found this video helpful and entertaining, and if you did, please remember to hit that subscribe button. Not only is it free to you, but it's also going to help you learn the things you need to know so that this game is more enjoyable for you. Thank you, and see you soon in the next video.